Thank so you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the HPV current situation with the vaccine in England. So for context, the vaccination program is school-based to girls aged 12 to 13, and that is year eight at school. It was rolled out in 2008 using the bivalent vaccine, but since 2012, uh, it's been through the quadrivalent vaccine. So current guidelines suggest two doses, at least six months apart, but the guidelines allows providers to deliver it up to 24 months in advance. In practice, almost all um, providers deliver the first dose in year eight, and then 12 months later in year nine, the second dose. So from September 2019, the program became um, universal, and that was going to be pretty much the big news this year. But unfortunately, with the COVID situation, it's, um, it's not really been that. So in England, schools uh, closed from the 23rd of March, 2020 due to COVID restrictions. And at this point, vaccination was completed in eight out of 150 local authorities in England. It was only partially completed in the majority, 116, and 26 had not yet started their vaccination program for the 2019-2020 period. So obviously this has had a huge impact on a number of females completing their doses. So you can see that for year nine, so the females that completed the two doses in 2019-20, the coverage was 65%, and that's compared to 84% in 2018-19. And the, priming, the coverage for the priming dose, so that's in year eight, females was 59% this year, compared to 88% in 2018 and 19. And then for males, uh, this was the first year they received their priming dose and the coverage was very similar to that observed in females, 54%. So what is quite in, um, encouraging is that coverage in all but one of the eight local authorities who had completed their vaccination program before schools shut was comparable to previous years. And that really does suggest that at the moment, the drops in coverage observes for this um, year is mainly due to the impact of COVID and not anything else. And so I've taken the information I've been talking about today from a document you can find online, and there is the link. It gives you quite a lot of graphs, and this is just to show you that uh, coverage has been affected differentially depending on the region of the country one is in, uh, but all of them have seen some impact. So what mitigation strategies have been put in place? So very early on in the first wave of the pandemic, an immunization task and finish group was established with the task to assess the impact of COVID on all immunization programs, but particularly to develop technical guidelines and a plan for restoration and recovery of the school age programs uh, as soon as schools reopened. And schools did partially reopen uh, in June 2020 uh, for some year groups for a mini summer term. But since September, all schools um, have been open for the academic year 2020-2021. And as some of you may know, we are currently experiencing a second round of uh, partial lockdown, but schools remain fully open uh, um, currently, although there is quite a lot of pressure on the government to rethink particularly secondary schools um, if this mini lockdown does not work. So um, immunization providers, once schools reopen, were able to implement the restoration and recovery plans and commence the um, catch up of partially or incomplete programs. And the statistics are encouraging because by the end of July, 91 of the providers um, of, of school immunization programs uh, were reporting that they were working to ensure um, catch up that at least all women had at least one dose of the vaccine. And um, that is pretty much all I have to say. Thank you very much.